Welcome to the Building and Growing Collegiate Esports Program as part of the Florida Citrus Sports um, Esports Symposium. My name is Bennett Newsom. I'm the esports strategist at Full Sail University. Um, and today we've got a great panel uh, that we're going to go over some uh, information with you. Uh, we've got Kevin from Twitch Student. Uh, he's the program manager there. And Dana, uh, who is the new director of esports at Florida Tech University. Uh, guys, if you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, talk a little bit about your journey so far and 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 what you do. Dana? Great. Thanks for having us today. Uh, my background is I was the director of esports at Grandview University in Des Moines, Iowa, a small private school. Um, and we established back in fall of 2017. So I have experience growing that from the ground up um, and have recently departed and will be taking over at Florida Tech here shortly. Excellent. Well, welcome. Welcome to Florida. And uh, uh, that's got to be an exciting change for you. So, uh, Kevin, uh, a little bit about your background as well. Sure. Thanks, Bennett. Um, hey, guys. Um, I'm the Scholastic Program Manager at Twitch. Uh, I like to say build stuff I wish I had in school. That's my day job. Uh, it's been really awesome to see the steam grow in the last few years. And I think uh, ultimately I'm here to kind of build, uh, you know, help more people, uh, more young people really discover and learn about uh, gaming and esports. And yeah, just we've been in been at Twitch for about four, three and a half years now. And uh, yeah, it, conversations are so different now. Like we're having panels and discussions about esports all the time to where five years ago it was like educating people what Fortnite was. And so <laughs> the conversation has been a lot different. So thanks to people like you who are kind of leading the charge in higher ed. And, and it's, it's, been, it's been incredible. To, and thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting today, I think. Uh, you know, as we've been moving forward in the years, you, you're you're absolutely right. Um, the collegiate side of esports has grown massively, and uh, while there was maybe a handful of schools, you know, five years ago, uh, there's there's quite a few now participating and building their programs. Um, so today we'll talk more about you know doing just that, actually building out your program um, and growing that from you know maybe something that maybe started as a smaller uh, student led um, Kind of initiative and has now uh, maybe gotten the support of uh, the administration and, and is taking on to new levels. Um, so I think one of the first things that's really important to discuss is, is research when it comes to um, what you are trying to do in the world of uh, collegiate esports. Um, I think that's a, that was a huge part for us at Full Sail uh, on really understanding the space um, you know, prior to just jumping in. Um, Dana, do you have you you know obviously building a, a very successful program and now moving uh, to a new uh, institution? Um, I, I'm sure that research phase had a, a huge part of uh, of kind of like your journey in the beginning. It did. Um, you know, it was approached to our university being small and a private school. You know, how are we going to integrate that into our campus life, into community engagement, and also just um, not knowing if there was a ton of gaming community necessarily in Iowa specifically. Right. Um, but actually the Midwest is that hub for a lot of esports. <laughs> really great programs have been coming out of it. And so, um, you know, it was really important that we sold the administration on it. And so many people who are now approaching this, like, oh, we, should we get into it? Should we not? I get so many questions in a day of like, well, how do we actually sell that to our administration and the value add that it's going to bring to our campus, as well as what is that return, right? What is the return on investment? Because as a university, yeah, you want to provide a really good program for, for students and engagement. But at the end of the day, they do also want to see some enrollment numbers in. Yeah. Um, and how do you effectively do that? with maybe small amounts of resources. A lot of people are not blessed with million dollar facilities right off the bat, right? And right. five employees. So it's just a learning process and really understanding the, the building that foundation in order to get that further success of the growth of the program. Absolutely. And I think that foundation is a, is a huge part of um, continuing the growth of it. And, you know, Twitch, for example, has been a great foundation for uh, most of these schools to get up and running and have a place to do it uh, live and and kind of a hub in in a central area for that. Uh, what um what kind of um you know research went into this the Twitch student program? Obviously, it's been around for a few years now. Um, is there any any specifics that you guys kind of said, hey, this is a huge area for us to really grow not only the brand of Twitch but what you guys are you know really focusing on now? 
Yeah. Um, so uh, I joined Twitch Student uh, after it's kind of been in stealth for about a year. And uh, I was like the first hire on that team. And, and, and at that point, I didn't know any, I didn't have a clue. That was my first full-time job. I was coming out of UW. Uh, mm-hmm. So I would say I got a bit lucky and, 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 and they took a bet, they took a, a bet on me, uh, you know, helping build, building the UW sports program, um, you know, and now kind of seeing how I could do it at a, at, at a, at a national and then now an international scale, it's very, it was very challenging. Um, and like Dana said, like everyone is pretty, um, understaffed under resourced and i think everyone uh, we first identified like one of the main issues starting uh starting up in the space is that there's a rapid adoption but not enough discourse between program directors and people that are leading programs like this like you two having a conversation about this stuff didn't happen that often back in the day and like yeah. that was like our first step uh moving forward was connecting program directors to each other um, as much and as and, and be very open with our our network and and just sharing that across the board and even sharing as much bis- as several different business plans. Uh, um, the one we shared the most with that I think UCI does a really good job of this was like their Wikipedia and their Tools for School uh, program. I think we shared it to at least like like eight hundred to a thousand like faculty members at this point it's, it's just been mm-hmm. shared across the board and and it, i think that was like step number one because i think everyone goes through the same different growth and pain points right like staffing issues recruitment those strategies those tactics to get you off year one you know someone like aj from utah or dana might have an answer for someone that's starting a program and so just saving people a bunch of time was like first and foremost most important um Number two, it's very easy for us at Twitch to uh, be involved in the space because, um, you know, the more people that obviously, the more esports programs there are and, and gaming esports programs there are, you know, the better Twitch does in the long run, right? And so uh, it's that whole, uh, you know, rising tide raises all ships kind of logic. Yep. And so that kind of allowed us to stay, uh, uh, stay in the scene for as long as we are, even though... Um, um, you know, we are like a for-profit entity and those things, you know, we're able to come to a business, come to a, a business model that makes sense. And, and we've been running with that for the last five years. Yeah. And, and you bring up some really interesting points. Uh, I think asking for help is, is kind of a vulnerable like situation, right? You, 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 you want to have the answers, but you also know that this could be a territory that you haven't really explored yet. And, and I think for us early on, we we got a lot of those things from you guys, you know, and uh, reaching out to other schools and having conversations. I did quite a bit of traveling, uh, you know, early on, uh, going to different um, schools, seeing seeing what they were doing, what did their arenas look like, what did you know, all these things that they were doing, um, and, and and just kind of learning. And I think that's a really important part about building mm-hmm. your program is is communicating with folks and you know, uh, mustering up the courage to go introduce yourself in, in, in at, a, at a convention, you know, where you don't know anybody and, um, you know, asking for help. And I think the great thing about where the collegiate esports um, kind of scene has been is has been a very helpful place. Um, it's been, I think everyone is on the same page saying, hey, we all want this to work, you know, let's work together to, to rise everything up. And that's been, you know, super successful. So I think, Part of that, obviously, uh, is is putting yourself in that vulnerable, you know, spot and, and asking for help. Uh, but then also, you know, once you've got to a point where you are established and you're doing things, it's also then reaching out back out to the people uh, that are asking you now for help and, and really continuing to to evolve and and grow not only yourself but uh, you know maybe your competitors or um, you know other schools down the street, which I think will be uh, in the long run more beneficial for everybody. Yeah, and I think people like um, Kurt Melcher with the first ever program to, mm-hmm. you know, Mark Deppie kind of and Kathy Chang has kind of led, like started that off, like with like the spirit of sharing, right? Yeah. And that kind of, that kind of uh, uh, mon- like mindset is now like something that I think that that what I love about collegiate sports is that that sharing of information is yeah. never, I've never seen anything like it when it comes to like, helping out your competitors. I think, <laughs> I think overall, like we do want to see the scene grow and, and we know that it's not about us or about our schools. It's more like about 
us collectively. Yeah. It, yeah. Very much so. And I think that's what um, is the beauty of what we are also part of, you know, mm -hmm. Not a lot of other even like businesses or other college sports, right, get this type of um, engagement from their their peers. Yep. We want to actually see each other succeed. And I cannot tell my students enough that the networking is just so important. That is how I have been able to have a lot of the opportunities that I have nationally, globally, everything. And had I not just put myself out there and had the ability to ask for help, um, you know, I wouldn't be in the position that I am today, accomplishing the things that we are, uh, you know, and I just think that's very important to, to reiterate to our industry and also anyone who's going to be watching this, whether that's K-12 or collegiate or whatever it is, um, you need to be asking for the help and the resources because this is not just a one-man show and we can't continue that. Yep, 100% agree with that. And, and I think that goes into that whole buy-in that you were talking about earlier where, um, you know, getting an understanding, getting those resources from uh, your peers uh, can really help with then pitching that to uh, administration and getting the buy-in. I, I know, you know, I was very lucky uh, at Full Sail that our administration already had bought in. You know, they were like, this is the thing, this is where it's going. We want to be involved in it. Let's do it. And and so that was that was great. But not everyone is like that. And, and they have to convince and they have to start small. Um, I would love to to talk about you know maybe some small things that you could you could do to try to increase uh, that awareness uh, for your administration uh, when it comes to buying into esports and and maybe conversations that either of you have had uh, about trying to uh, see the bigger picture when it comes to collegiate esports. Yeah, well, one of the initial things that I have learned over those years, and especially in the community that I was in, in the very small private school, right, you just, it's harder to convince that kind of administration to do something this sporadic and new and progressive, right? right. So we have that where we needed as much data as possible of, okay, where do we see this in five years or even in seven years? Where was that market trending? Now, at that point, four years ago, we didn't have a ton of data, but we also had quality programs that were out there and individuals who were willing to speak to our administration. Um, and also just giving projected potential revenue totals, um, what kind of space and in, in engagement in our communities were we going to make an impact on? What groups could we actually partner with locally to drive maybe even a pipeline to Grandview specifically at that time? Now, when I go to FIT, that's going to be a different situation. But these are the conversations that had to have happened in order for us to, to get their buy-in. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, really kind of focusing on that research and being able to share the things that you've you know, procured from other institutions, um, you know, has ha has helped, I think, with a lot of schools uh, in regards to, um, you know, building and, and kind of conveying that, hey, this is a thing, this is where it's going to be, where it's going, we've got to, you know, we have an opportunity to really connect with our students who are going to be doing this regardless, you know, with without us, they're, they're having fun, they're playing games, they're meeting people, they're networking, uh, they're putting on tournaments and discords and, and, and all of that. Um, let's have a, an avenue where we can support this. So I think that's a huge opportunity um, to continue to, to kind of have that conversation. And, and you know, again, starting small is, is not a bad thing. Um, you know, jumping headfirst in uh, with a, a million different titles that you're trying to compete in is going to be a challenge. Um, but, you know, starting small and, and working towards that goal and growing, uh, you know, consistently over the seasons is going to be uh, definitely an important thing. Um, you know, with different leagues come with a lot of different, obviously, games um, that you could compete in uh, for your teams. Is there any any specifics that you look look for, Dana, when it comes to um, like the different leagues that uh, are are you know going to be hosting tournaments and things for your teams to join? Yeah, well, um, I am, I feel like I'm becoming a master of navigating all of the third party orgs and national seasons. I don't know, just more and more <laughs> gets put on my plate, right, to schedule and what is the benefit to my students of participating in that specific league or season? Um, what organizers are doing things well or have I had a negative experience? Did they put things on in a timely manner? You know, there's just all those questions that you would ask yourself for, um, other programming that you would do in education, but in this route, you know, 
what is that registration fee? You know, what leagues am, are going to be uh, most competitive or likewise skill? It's very important that we're putting our students into events that they're not being discouraged, right? Um, you're going to have some of those sometimes, but really pinpointing, okay, what is the best thing for my university and these skill sets? Are, am I going for competitive, right? The starting up programs need to know if I am actually really, really competitive, you're going to be at the tiers of maybe in say League of Legends, some grandmaster challenger teams. And if you have a gold team playing in CLOL, sometimes that can be very lopsided, right? Yeah. Um, understanding, um, again, what that benefit to your institution is and if it's a financially feasible option for you. Um, we have a lot of smaller operating budgets in several of the universities and just understanding, okay, where should I be putting my, my dollars? Where is it best utilized? Um, maybe it needs to be going to my facility and, and my kids' experience on campus versus travel experiences, right? Mm -hmm. How do you make the differentiation of if my teams should be going and participating in different different events. Yeah. I think that's a that's a huge challenge and, and I think a, a you know for most schools understanding that budget and and getting a spot for esports um, is probably the the hardest part of their journey in, in growing their program um, and starting you know starting their program. Um, any tips that you had from talking to people? I guess I think the biggest one was knowing if um, should we be taking our funds and traveling a long distance. Um, I, I just really was very budget conscientious as many are going to be. And when you're working with such a small operating, right, you just have to make the best decision. And if it's going to like, Hey, am I going to use all my dollars in first semester? What am I going to do next semester? Right. Um, that's, that's what a lot of people are being faced with. And I think sometimes people in those director positions or even just head coaching positions, sometimes have never had to face like, Hey, where do I need to be allocating these dollars and, and how is my year actually going to look? So we do a very robust work out where we put all the events that we want to go to and we give them like a rating system um, for the return on investment. That's a, that's probably a really good way to do it too. And let's, let's talk about that real quick. Cause you, you bring up a couple points about uh, like proper staffing, right. And, and the, re the relationship to student demand um, and when, when to bring more staff in. Um, I would love to, to get your ideas and, and thoughts on, on um, kind of understanding what you really actually need uh, versus what you probably think from a traditional side of, of staffing a sports, uh, you know, and a, a league or, or a team or, or how that all works together. Yeah, my favorite question, actually. Um, we typically try to I, at least from my experience, right, I was a solo employee director of esports for the program up until just this last fall is when we were able to actually okay. hire our, for our additional um, full time staff. So uh, a lot of your schools are going to be making some sort of enrollment number requirement in order to gain an employee, a full-time employee or part-time staff, whatever that could be. Um, so that'll be like the first trans like round of information you need to get from your administration of, okay, how can I actually rapidly grow, right? Because you don't want to be a solo employee with 37 kids. Yeah. That's just impossible, right? And especially <laughs> yes. if you don't have knowledge in six different game titles, no one, no one's going to be able to coach that, honestly. Yep. Um, but we need to look for those people in the director positions who are able to build that administrative infrastructure. Um, I think it's very important that they have operational management skills. They at least understand the higher education ecosystem, how to have those intense conversations with administrations. Because mm -hmm. um, we do get a lot of young candidates, right? Um, because esports, a lot of those people are, you know, in their 20 to 25. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a lot of that life experiences either. And so it's very important to get those um, people in those director positions that can can be at the helm, right? And be your, your voice and voice of reason to growing your program. Your head coaches are your next additional additions. Um, I really dislike it when we have programs who are saying a director needs to be a full-time coach of either one or two titles. I know that we see that a lot and it's, it's frustrating, um, but I've also been there too, right? So I, I get the pain points. Um, and, and then when you can add those additional part-time staffing or whether it's a remote coach, or maybe you can actually implement um, 
students, uh, student staff, right? I think we need to really be looking at how do we build their skills up because you can bring in really competent and great students who want to coach and be analysts and do some of that work that maybe a full-time employee, you just don't have the budget to do, right? Or right. approval from your administration. You have to get creative and, and that's, that's the fine line, right? Um, maybe it's GA positions. I, I just think it's very important that you are thinking outside of the box. And I can tell you, I've done all of the above. I have gone through every single employment opportunity to try or, or student opportunity with scholarship to make a robust um, employee section. Yeah, and I totally agree. And I think, you know, it's something that we've, we've really leaned into um, is that student experience. Um, and there's, you know, at, for the most part, every student that I talk to um, that falls under the Armada or, you know, esports uh, kind of interest, they all want to work in esports. They all, th this is the goal. This is a dream. They want to get to a place where they uh, can do something like this, what they love. And, um, you know, walking out the door and being able to say, oh, I was the coach for my Rocket League team. Uh, and I also held these positions within the, uh, you know, I was the student director of esports at Full Sail. Like that's a huge, um, you know, resume builder that you're going to have to go out and, and start to do stuff with. And, and um, you know, creating those types of opportunities for students um, that meet, you know, definitely like GPA requirements or not even meet, but like exceeds, you know, they, they really stand out. I think it's a huge opportunity, um, you know, to get some experience because they're going to need it. They're going to need to have that knowledge uh, once they get out into the workforce and, um, you know, start going in, in that path of, of esports, whether that's at the collegiate level or, or beyond. Um, you know, I think that really can give opportunities to students. And, and you know, Kevin, I know that you guys are pre presenting a lot of opportunities as well uh, when it comes to uh, students. Um, is there anything specific that you've got? I mean, in the works? Yeah. Um, so uh, last year we kicked off uh, um, one, uh, um, our very first, like, I would say we never really worked together to build our own tournament series before. Mm -hmm. It was like a newer experience. We've always, uh, you know, supported, uh, uh, supported, uh, but never like, Hey, let's let's work together to build something like this. But um, uh, we're working with a uh, community with an X. So we worked with them since like last like February. Uh, Ryan and, and John Cash and his team, uh, their team there, has kind of built out something really special. And uh, together, we came up with the idea to build something called the HBCU Esports League. We kicked that off this year, and um, it's been incredible with the amount of not only the the being able to highlight and generate the, the viewership to kind of let, let the scene know and let the industry know what's going on. Uh, we're also providing uh, 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 scholarship funds uh, to help um, elevate and, and get these students uh, in these communities, uh, the tools and equipments uh, that they need to be able to compete. Um, a lot of the times there's a, there's a, in esports, like there's a huge problem with accessibility when it comes to devices. Esports is not really inclusive as in there's about in terms of just games. I'm just purely talking about games here. There's literally like eight games. I'm, I'm using like eight games as like a, a, a figure of speech, but you know, and most of them are um, PC based games. Right. Right. And so uh, when we're talking about inclusivity, diversity, and equity, we also have to look at uh, the tech side of it as well and the devices that we all play in. Um, so that's, that's one area we're focusing on. Uh, we launched the HBC Sports League. We got Verizon on board and we've kicked it off and it's, it's, it's doing well now. And then from there, you know, it's generated enough interest within the HBCU communities, like the universities themselves, and has allowed us to now work with those institutions uh, first party, firsthand. And so not only these, these students are playing this like premium, like tier one experience, right? Now they're getting, they're playing in front of like 30,000 people on watching on, on the front page of Twitch, right? These are, you know, moments that you will, you, you, you will highlight. They're also getting internship opportunities at these uh, um, endemic companies like Riot. Uh, we hired one at a Twitch engineering internship. So there's like these, these movements to like, let's actually like, let's not just put dollars and cents into it. Let's, let's put in our time. Let's put in, uh, let's, let's, let's 
get them placed into these companies because at the end of the day, right, it's not just about playing at the highest level. It's, it's about building into careers. Um, and now we're working with the schools to kind of do what, we, what we've always done, which is helping them and connecting them and giving them our network and, and, and rinse and repeat, basically. Um, outside of that, well, we've, I've been very passionate about um, uh, student creator opportunities as well. Um, so there's some projects in the works uh, on this, but right now um, we're providing a, a decent amount of scholarship funds uh, to help people uh, who are, who, who are uh, you know, giving, in their sh giving a shot at, uh, at streaming and they just need an extra uh, one to $2,000 scholarship to buy the equipment that they need to do to kind of take their stream to the next level. Um, so we're working with the 1000 Dreams Fund, which is focusing on women in this space that want to uh, be a, to grow as a content creator. Um, two, we're also uh, building some sort of mentorship program around it where you get to meet Twitch partners and get to learn from them, like kind of develop more programming around it outside of just, again, less, not just about funds, but actually time. Right. At the end of the day, it's about time back into the scene. So we're trying to uh, bridge those two gaps together. Um, lastly, uh, we, we ran like several uh, student streaming experiences out in the UK and now it's kind of permeated into Europe where like each school would represent their people would uh, students would sign up and then whoever was like gener like was uh, got got the most minutes watched or whatever for the, for the semester got a bunch of prizing uh from Twitch and 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 they got an award ceremony um it's some very exper experimental like early stage stuff but we wanted to kind of do something outside of competition as well and so we did uh, a streaming version of that competition and it was fun. It was the students got to meet other streamers on campus and we we're able to like, you know, and a lot of them did not just play esports titles, like to no surprise, right? There was a bunch of Among Us content. There's a bunch of World of Warcraft content to um, now, um, now Russ as well, last like couple months ago. Like you're not like giving space to people that don't want to just play those top eight titles. Um, so I'm more conscientious on that kind of build. And I'm still searching for those types of opportunities. And we're just getting started on that front. Awesome. I'd like that to sounds... add to that, actually, yeah, sure. because one, um, we know that we need, uh, that's your value add. So the people watching this who are just going to start, right, and sell your administration, these are those value adds of why you need to be putting a program in um, and making those different sections of your esports community club um, production and content creation, uh, coaching, right? Just all these different things that we now can help with career pathwaying. Uh, that's something that I'm very passionate about with helping each of my individual students, you know, let's build your resume today. Let's start looking at jobs. What are we interested in? Who do I know or who do, can I connect you with, right? That we can place you somewhere to just get an internship experience, even if it's a micro internship, right? A month of time or a week of time is is so vital to their growth. And also it's a really good reflection on, on your school. You're getting recognition for your program in ways that your university was never noticed before by other companies. That's something that I learned very early on at Grandview because we were just small, nobody really cared, but. By having this, the national recognition that has been brought to Grandview for not only competitive, but for leadership, um, that's something that that is going to give a lot of return and just be be happy, right? Engage your alumni. All of these different assets to it is just very important to get your administration to understand and go to resources like Kevin, right? Go to go to you, Bennett. Um, all of these different things are just going to help you sell that program. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, you make a really great point. Um, you know, there's so many schools that are on the map now because of esports. And um, that's something that, you know, you, you never would have heard these names before uh, if it wasn't for this. And so I think that's a great example as well um, to really show, hey, this, this has a lot of power to uh, elevate the school, the name, the brand, uh, you know, get it out there. Um, and especially if you're, you know, a leader in those spaces, it's going to be a, a really exciting time for uh, the school. While a lot of people, maybe higher up in the administration, don't necessarily get it right away as as it continues to climb, you know, that that can be a really exciting thing for, um, you know, the school to, to really start to see that elevation. So, 
Um, you know, one of the other things that I did want to talk about today is, and this is something that we get asked a lot. Um, uh, we have we have quite a large space on our campus called the Fortress, which is a, a, a very <laughs> uh, big uh, uh, esports arena. Um, but that is a great question because I, I don't think most people are going to build something like that. But talking about getting started, building your facility, uh, what's important? Um, when do I start bidding? What, who, what kind of sponsors am I looking for? I think that is, is one of the most asked questions that I receive is, hey, how do I, how do I start this? And, and I would love to get your guys' input um, on that. And, and, and um, you know, as far as the sponsorship, uh, thing is concerned. I, I think that's a, a, a kind of its own separate thing, but uh, focusing on the arena, Dana, w- what have you uh, kind of uh, been sharing with others uh, about building your facility and, and what were the steps that you took to, to really get that off the ground? Sure. Ultimately, finding the space on your campus that the school is willing to give you, right? Mm -hmm. Whether that is a very small room, um, you can only use it on two nights of the week, maybe it's a part of the library, very rare has that happened, but, um, you know, just take the space that you're you're able to get and make it the best that you can, Um, whether that's five machines or eight machines. I've worked with schools that are quite literally at five, and I've worked with some that are going to be at 75, right? Um, whatever your school is willing to give you, leverage it and then make it your own. You're, you may have more resources, tables and chairs on your campus, right? You don't have to go out for a big spending cost. And then maybe in that sponsorship partnership area, what locally can wants to give back to the school, right? Um, you'd be very surprised to find, well, you shouldn't be surprised really, but um, your local school people and businesses want to give back. They want to provide a, a cool thing and job opportunities even. This is just another networking part of building your program. And if you can make good relationships with, you know, PC providers or chair providers, um, anything like that, that's always great. And I always like to send those to the people that I know and have worked with and I know I've been able to provide for a variety of campuses, ones that have healthy budgets and some that don't. Um, You can always find something that fits your mold and that's very important. You don't have to have extravagant. You 100% can have a basic setup and it will still feel like community. That's the big key, right? We need to just build a welcoming, comforting space to provide a home for these students. And with our space, it was a gradual process. We had been working just in the education sector with Omen by HP. So at Grandview, I was very fortunate with that. They uh, wanted to support some of the tournaments we hosted for collegiate. And so it just developed into a great partnership. Um, And we're very proud of that. And the machines run fabulously. Um, And then also just like what kind of tables and desks and chairs like are we going to be getting? Um, I think you you can do a lot and you can make sponsorship packages. I know some schools will do that of like, hey, this is what you get for a, a $2,000 package. Um, maybe you want to have a local place, make your jerseys. You know, there's just a lot of ways that you can, again, be creative and connect with them to establish your space. Yeah, absolutely. I know we do a club gathering uh, every month or prior to uh, this, we, we did. Uh, we do it in, in, uh, on Twitch now online. Uh, do a virtual club gathering. But, uh, you know, prior to that, there was a lot of food that we'd always be ordering. So this is a great opportunity if you're looking to, you know, uh, see if there's any sponsorship opportunities. Say, hey, we're going to always order food from you for this event. Like, you know, are you interested in being part of it? Um, Can really open uh, some opportunities for for you locally, uh, like you said. Um, As well, I think, um, you know, utilizing what you've got uh, is, is important too. you know, I, I, who, who doesn't want a brand new PC that is got uh, the top specs. Of course, everyone does, but, you know, learn taking what is there, uh, utilizing it to its fullest potential, um, and, and proving that you can then take it to the next level is I think a really important thing for a lot of people, um, as well, looking inside the school already, maybe you have relationships with companies, uh, for another program, another whether it be traditional sports or academics, maybe there is a a, a relationship that your school already has um, with uh, you know X Y Z company that you can then kind of piggyback off of uh, is something that I always recommend to schools to at least have that conversation with administration um, when it comes to that. Um, 
Kevin, with, with sponsorship, obviously Twitch, you know, it's Twitch. You guys uh, know everyone and, and it's, uh, you know, something that I think um, uh, is a different perspective from, from you, but uh, I think a good thing to, to talk about is, is getting started with Twitch student. Like how does uh, a brand new school getting started uh, building their program? Uh, what are the steps that they should take to, to get involved with Twitch? Um, we're like currently in the middle of revamping our offerings with universities, but overall it's always been, um, some of the structures that I've always liked and enjoy was, um, being part of like this, like unofficial advisory group. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're part of, part of an official one at UCI, but they all kind of operate the same. We meet up every quarterly and just kind of, um, the school kind of uses that as a way to speak to industry folks. Um, and just kind of continue learning what's going on. And so because we're at Twitch, um, you know, I see a lot of what goes on because we're uh, agnostic for, for different titles. So we get to see um, a lot of different endeavors in the space. So uh, it's important that um, we share some of this knowledge uh, to uh, schools in an advisory uh, sort of setting to kind of, you know, help them plan that three-year roadmap. Uh, like again, building with what you have into what you want to be. Um, I think that... Uh, I think that's pretty important to us. Um, right now, um, we're uh, mostly uh, we're are we we are um, you know um, there's nothing of like right now like that we we've kind of pulled back on university streams, um, but it doesn't stop us from being able to engage with your your campus and your students and being able to. Uh, review those types of business plans, those docs, and kind of helping you articulate, uh, you know, learning outcomes, uh, road mapping, what that program could look like that's outside of your competitive play. I think a lot of schools, um, you know, they usually get that varsity esports program down correctly, you know, um, mm -hmm. they, with like one or two titles. I mean, sometimes they go, they, 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 they stretch too thin with like six games with one, like one, one program director slash head coach problem, right? And so like, do we need to, you know, help, correct that sometimes but most of it and then from there we want them to kind of expand their comfort zone of outside those eight titles i think that's that's really critical in building that gaming culture on campus i think um with the growth of scholastic like institutionalization of esports um we need to be reminded more of uh what community what community looks like on campus and how to integrate uh gaming as a whole because esports is like three percent of the entire gaming demographic right so um again it's it's not it's uh it's uh it's great to use esports as like that like it's like almost clickbaity sometimes um mm -hmm. but in the day it's like you know gaming is is it, 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 there's so many different ways to express it right and with these machines that you're putting in your lab you know it's not just meant to be playing those eight games. Like there's so many different ways to involve different types of people. Like who wants to go play against your varsity team and get their butt kicked right on like a Friday night. Like that, you know, uh, we used to do things like triathlon style where you we would pick random games that have no esports component at all uh, from, from like um, things like overcooked to all the way to like, you know, among us types of competitions and just like use that to just bond. Um, I think overall, um, yeah, just giving them more ideas to kind of be a little bit more laid back and more relaxed about this whole thing. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to, you know, there, there's a lot of like just nice, like, like you know, um, wholesome moments in gaming and esports. But I think that sometimes that gets diluted uh, with, with how serious it's, it's becoming. I use the word serious because a lot of more money has been in it since the last like six years. <laughs> I think yeah. something that, though, you two to add here, you have uh, the way you're going to be structuring your program, right? If you don't have a crazy amount of scholarships, you don't need to, you're not going to probably be on that highest competitive realm always. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think one of the things that I've been working with a lot of schools is coming up with three or four really good scholarship varsity titles is always quality. And then creating supported or JV titles below that, right? Maybe they don't get a scholarship or they get a smaller scholarship. And then you also have a club community around it. Um, you're able to then put three different groups of people together on different levels and your university can also see um, 
just just good things coming from each of those. There's benefits to offering all three types uh, instead of just varsity or just club or something like that. You have to have kind of a mix in order to hit all of the, the student population. Yeah, and you both bring up a good point about community. I think that's a huge area that a lot of schools sometimes miss is that um, while the competitive side of esports is is what we normally talk about and what elevates a lot of the programs. Uh, it's all the people that aren't on those teams that really come together to help make that elevation happen. And I think providing opportunities for the community itself um, is a huge area of of growth and opportunity um, to be in that club environment, to to have opportunities to go and play random games, whether it's overcooked or, or among us, you know, that's a huge deal. And, and it's something that, um, you know, we really try to focus on here is, is building that community, giving opportunity to students that want to participate. Maybe they're not the greatest at call of duty or league of legends or whatever it is that the, that the teams are playing, uh, but they still can be involved in some way. Um, and I think that's a, a really uh, great way to open doors uh, for students as well as, is continuing to engage with the community creating community events. Most, I would assume most schools are having, they have their discord channel where they're really focusing on, on building that community um, and open that uh, up and, and really, uh, you know, trying to elevate that I think is a, is a great step to growing your program um, as well. I mean, there's, there's plenty of places where students come and they don't know that esports exists at this school, you know, and they're like, wait, what, you have an esports team. Okay, cool. Like, right. how do I get involved? Right. <laughs> you know, And, and so continuing to build that community effort, focusing on those students um, is going to be something that I think will continue to the growth of, of, uh, you know, esports at your school. Um, as well, the, the more staff that you have eventually uh, is going to help with that because there's uh, uh, eventually a lot of students that will be into it uh, and coming into a place like Discord uh, can definitely feel overwhelming. But, um, you know, really focusing on those things together, I think is going to be important. I feel like we're, we're coming to uh, a point where we're running out of time. So do you, either of you have any uh, kind of last minute uh, points that you'd like to share with the audience watching today? I think always go for quality over quantity. Um, maybe redundant, but it is true, um, especially if you're just starting out. You need to make sure that you have your house under control before expanding too far um, into other avenues that you know, you need to cater to the students. Um, what is the benefit and, and of them being at your school and why should they choose your school? Um, be really proud of what you're offering and your kids are going to buy into it. Awesome. Any cl closing thoughts from you, Kevin? Um, no, I think, I think I got everything I wanted to say out of this panel and I think Dana left it off, like ended it really well. So I'm just going to going to stay here and fold my arms <laughs> yeah like thank it. you so much i like it and and you know i think that um uh, again going back to the beginning of this conversation it was about uh um you know putting yourself in that vulnerable position and asking for help uh i think that is uh absolutely the right way to go about it if you're just getting started um so feel free to reach out to me uh I, i'm gonna volunteer you guys as well um uh, if you have questions or, or need a little guidance uh, when it comes to this, uh, again, I think all of us are on the same page that uh, as this continues to grow, everyone grows with it. And um, we're, you know, honored to, to be able to hear, be here today to chat with you all. And, um, you know, obviously we'll, we'll go from there. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.